Shabbat Shalom. I'm sure that yesterday your heart broke like mine upon reading or hearing about the crime that took place at the JCC day camp in West Bloomfield. According to the Free Press, a 21-year-old former camp staff member was charged with several child pornography charges after he allegedly abused multiple children at the day camp. Our friendship, support, and care are extended to all the families affected by this heinous crime. We stand, too, with the JCC, recognizing that though we do all that we can to keep predators away from those in our watch, there are still evil and sick people in this world. We're saddened whenever anyone suffers abuse or is the victim of any crime. We are doubly saddened when it happens to our own family within our own neighborhood. According to researchers, child pornography is now a $3 billion business worldwide. Moreover, there are over 1 million people trafficked in the sex trade each year. Worldwide, more than one-third of women suffer some form of abuse. There's no doubt that monotheism is the core teaching of Jewish thought. There is only one God. But rooted within that concept is the very principle that we are opposed to ethical relativism. When we recognize the one God, we affirm that there is right and wrong in this world. We strive to live by our understanding of what God expects of us in terms of how we treat God and how we relate to our fellow man. As Jews, we further learn that the core of the messianic ideal, the Jewish vision to which we all work and for which we all pray, is the belief that God will bring justice to an unfair world, that God will lift up the fall and raise the lowly, and that God will give power to those who lack it. What strikes us as particularly horrible about child pornography, as well as rape, sex trafficking, and other forms of abuse, is that the powerful are preying on the powerless. We place our children into the hands of others, trusting that they will keep them safe. These families' trust was violated, their innocent children taken advantage of. And in so doing, the foundation of society becomes weaker whenever the powerful take advantage of their power. Everyone suffers. In our Torah portion this week, Parashat A, we come to see that the divine system of judgment rests on ensuring the powerless receive their share, that those with means are required to care for those with lesser means. In the midst of Moses' second discourse to our ancestors before they crossed into the Promised Land without him, Moses instructs the Israelites to crush out idolatry wherever they see it in Israel. He teaches them more about kashrut, about how to identify a true prophet, about the Jewish holidays, and about the importance of the Holy Temple. Then Moses switches gears to talk about the laws of sacred economy. He instructs our ancestors about the idea of tithing, the requirement that they give, that we give, 10% of our income for those unable to provide for themselves. Moses tells our ancestors that every seven years debts ought to be forgiven, lest anyone become subject to permanent indentured servitude. Aware of the intricacies of human nature, Moses also commands us, if there is a needy person among you, do not harden your heart and shut your hand against your needy kinsmen. That is to say, not only are we obligated to provide for the poor among us, we must do so with love, and more importantly, with respect. But that's not where the Torah stops in terms of making sure that those who become downfallen are lifted up. Moses commands us that not only do we release our slaves after six years, we're obligated to provide for them when they go into freedom. Bear in mind that you were slaves, Moses reminds us. Do not let them go empty-handed. We have an obligation from God 
to care for those in need, to lift up the fallen, and to bring justice and fairness into the world. It's our custom here at Congregation Shard Sedek to invite our members during the High Holy Days to offer a donation to Yad Ezra, of course, our local food pantry. This year, we again offer that opportunity, though through a slightly different format. Thanks to the hard work of many volunteers and under the vision of our new Berman Center for Jewish Education, we are hosting on September 27th the first Erase Hunger event. Erase Hunger. The 5K Family Fun Run or Walk and Sukkot Carnival is aimed to not only provide needed funds for Yad Ezra, but also to educate people about the plight of the hungry and the poor. I will be running, as will many others. For those of you who only run when being chased, I hope you will consider sponsoring some of us, donating to the event, or doing whatever you can to erase the plight of the hungry in our community. But that's just one step we can all take. There is so much more that needs to be done. A few minutes ago, we sang the songs of the Hallel, the collection of psalms dedicated for special holidays, including Rosh Chodesh. Together, you and I quoted King David, who proclaimed, Odecha ki anitani vatahili li shua. I give thanks to you, God, even when you, God, cause me to suffer, for you have been my salvation. Then David adds, as did we, Evan ma'asu habonim haital rosh pina. The stone that the builder has rejected will become the chief cornerstone. Throughout history, the people and the land of Israel has been the stone that the builder rejected. We Jews know what it means to suffer. We know what it means to be enslaved. We know what it means to be abused, kidnapped, and tortured. We know what it means to be hungry, to be lowly, to be among the downtrodden. But for many of us, thank God, we're now in a position to give. We're in a position to raise the lowly and to free the captive. Just as God promised thousands of years ago, just as King David sang, the stone that the builder had rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the messianic vision of fairness and justice, and we are becoming empowered to fulfill it. Our hearts break for the children and families taken advantage of at the JCC, as well as the victims of sex crimes throughout the world. Our hearts break for the widow, the poor, and the orphan. Our hearts break for modern-day slaves and those conscripted against their will into warfare. But it is not enough for our hearts to break. As we're reminded in our Torah portion this week, we are obligated to care for the poor and for all those in need, not just with an open hand, but with an open heart. Moreover, we're commanded by God to strive ever harder to make sure the powerless are free from victimization. We are to work for the day when the lion shall lie down with the lamb, because the lamb will no longer fear the lion. They will both be equal. They will both be powerful. They will both sit under their vine and fig tree and none shall make them afraid. On this Shabbat, in which we enter the last month of 5775, this Rosh Chodesh, may God strengthen our hands, ennoble our hearts, and clarify our mind in pursuit of the Messianic dream, a day of justice, a day of fairness, a day when all shall be at peace and in safety. Kein Yehi Ratzon, may this be God's will. May this be our will. And let us say together, Amen.